or so. Um, Perfect. Now, well, I mean, we'll, just, I, we'll just get this going then. All yeah, right, guys, we'll what's up? I got Ashley Mistreacha. No, I'm just playing this <laughs> correct? Yes, Mistreta. It's Italian, eh? Oh, Italian. Uh, yeah. Give me, give me $50 or I'll, I'll break your knuckles. I remember yeah, the mafia. That's it. Remember the mafia. Those days were pretty cool. But guys, this is Ashley. She's an absolute fucking killer in this industry. She's from the dirty, dirty South. <laughs> and she will cut you if you fuck around with her. I'll cut you. Yeah. Seriously. I don't know. This is the first time we're getting to meet on like a virtual screen. But Ashley, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm doing really great. Um, business has been good. Life has been good. Uh, I can't complain. I haven't been struck by any drive-bys around here, so it's, everything's rocking. <laughs> yeah. Does, does your office get hit by like drive-bys once a year or something? You know, our office doesn't, but just Baton Rouge is so dangerous. I mean, like the good mall, you know, the nice mall. There was a drive-by at that last year, so it's it's just everywhere. What were they even like? Have you ever, have you guys ever got like robbed at the office or anything? It's no. Like, some fucking insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anyone get robbed for insurance. Yeah, no. L luckily, we have managed to to not be robbed, but I don't like being in the office after dark. I'll tell you that. I'll, I'll lock the doors if I'm the last one in here. You're a smart girl. Yeah. And I'll bring my piece in from my car. So I, I just don't trust it around here. You're a smart girl. Like half the, I'd say 97.26% of the women I know back home, like they'll want to go to like Chicago and walk around alone at 2 a.m. No. And it's no. Like it's a fairy tale delusion world they live in where, it, where they act like some dude won't come fucking kidnap them. They must be in their 20s because well, they are. They are. Yeah. They're young, dumb, and they, they yeah. act. And they act like it. No, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, it's nuts. But I'm the bad guy for calling it out and holding them accountable because I, I have standards that I live by, and I think women should be protected and kept safe. But if that makes me a dickhead, so be it. <laughs> no, nah, it, it just it just makes you smart. So yeah. I'd probably would have done the same thing in my twenties. I'm glad you agree. Well, you you've also got some experience and wisdom. So you're from Baton Rouge. How long have you been in the insurance industry now? I'm going to hit eight years, uh, actually this month. So eight years. Well, congratulations. And what, thank you. What was so bad at your previous thing, whatever <laughs> you were doing before insurance, what got you to make the jump to this? All right. Yeah. People change careers because they hate where they are or because they love what they want to do. And nobody says, I love insurance. Let me do it. Right. Correct. So I was I was actually in retail. Uh, I was a makeup artist. So I was the cushy side of retail, you know, doing makeup and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then got promoted as like a regional director. So then I was traveling, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, Alabama as a makeup artist, which was fun for a while. But then it's retail. So you're working nights, you're working long hours, you're working every holiday. Um, and you just get to be miserable. Like I was doing that for 10 years. You think, and I wanted to move up with the company and become a trainer with one of the luxury makeup uh, companies. And then I realized the only trainer position that was going to be available possibly in the near future was in Chicago. And, um, you know, the crime, hey, it's about the same as here. For me as a Southern girl, it was more so the cold. I'm like, uh -uh, I'm, I'm not living in cold. Um, so didn't like that. And then, you know, we got a new manager come over the company as well, the department stores. And he said, hey, look, so we're going to, you know, cut some of your pay out and we want you to travel to Florida, you know, like once a month. Oh, by the way, we're not going to pay to put you up in a hotel. You can just drive those six hours there, work eight hours and drive six hours back. And I said, fuck this. No, no. And literally I went home that night and I put my resume all over everywhere. I don't even know where I put it. And the next day, the first person to call me was actually the company I'm working for now. And they called me in for an interview. I had no idea what it was. And it was one of those weird group interviews, you know. Oh, I love pitched. those. Those are my favorite. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what the heck am I getting into? This is surely some like MLM kind of thing. They want me to recruit other people crap. Um, but we finished with that and then they broke out into individual interviews. And the first thing I asked the guy that was interviewing me, as I said, is this, is this MLM? Then he like busted out laughing, <laughs> just like I do when agents ask me that now. Um, he was like, no, it's, it's insurance and it's sales. And I'm like, oh shit, I can do sales. That's fine. Yeah. I remember when I first started recruiting agents, they're like, well, selling insurance is a scam. Do you, mm -hmm. you know what my definition of a, my analogy of a scam is now, Ashley? Still what? confused about money. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. So, yeah, I, th I thought that was pretty clever. And luckily, I've never been in any group interviews for anything like this. They did have those like virtual corporate overviews i think is what they call it you yeah. come in you bind all the hype they're like we've made this many trillionaires this right alone. yeah <laughs> like sign yeah. me the fuck up yeah i yeah. want money yeah we go to cancun every year and everybody comes and yeah they do and then my first trip to cancun it was like the high ups in the company fucking drunk falling over oh, some yeah. dude busted his head open some dumbass got like half of his finger bit off by like some iguana by the pool because he's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. like, and then people are trying to hook up with me, do swinger shit. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I came here because like y'all yes. told me if I earn this trip, I'd learn a lot of cool stuff. And it's like, <laughs> y'all are just teaching me how to drink more. <laughs> like, I don't need any help. I, I haven't touched alcohol in years. Like, uh, yeah, what can you tell me about selling a policy? <laughs> so yeah how many times did you want to quit when you first came in oh god a lot i mean i actually did you know i i was when i started it was actually right during busy season i you know they set us the goal they want us to reach you know 100,000 av in 13 weeks and i blew that out the water but then it kind of got slow and I, there was nobody in the office at the time that was doing well, first of what all. Were you, what were you selling, just to clarify? Um, health insurance. Okay. So primarily health insurance, life insurance as well, and then supplemental stuff. Okay, so, heart attack, stroke, accidentals, and then Right, okay. right. So kind of wrapping it all together as a package. Um, but yeah, I mean, our busy, with the health insurance, the busy season's open enrollment, which is about to about to come up. Yeah, and I started about this time. There, I got some agents that are pretty excited about that. Like, start cross selling as soon as you build that book up. Yeah. What a so slow season came around, and what happened? Like, what was going through your head? You're like, uh, yeah, fucking leaving. Well, no, I'm just. Uh, I started looking around me, looking at the other people in the office, looking at the leaders in the office, and I didn't see anybody successful. Like, nobody was killing it. Nobody really had any idea how to do anything better. The training was limited. I just said this, I just don't see this going anywhere, you know? Um, and then one of my friends who was in mortgage insurance, actually at a company you used to work with, um, he reached out to me and he said, hey, I saw you got your license. Why don't you come ride with me and, and see what this mortgage insurance stuff is about? I said, sure. Uh, rode with him for a little bit. And I said, well, heck, at least I'll have somebody to train me, somebody I can look up to, somebody, you know, that, that's successful, help me out doing this. So I did that for probably about a year and I did okay. You know, I didn't like at that time. It was before COVID. So it was face to face. I was on the road every day, usually having to get out of Baton Rouge because it's not safe. Um, so I was going about an hour. Sure is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like walk up and knock on the door with my gun. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nice. so I would I would have to drive about an hour and a half to another city, you know, and set my appointments up. And dude, I mean, before I was working pretty much virtual over the phone, super easy. And this I'm driving an hour and a half and you're gonna stand me up or not be at home. You know, it was just setting up those appointments got to be just a pain. And I did pretty well at it, but I started thinking, you know what? It's much better not having to be on the road late at night too as a woman i didn't like that either my boyfriend definitely didn't like that 
Um, and then the, the original health company I was working for, they called me and they said, hey, look, we got a new leader coming in. He's coming in from one of our other offices. Please come meet him. Just come meet him and see. And I said, I'll see, but y'all haven't shown me anything yet. So, um, yeah, he, Tommy came in and I met with him and I was like, okay, I like this guy. Like he's got dreams. He's got visions. He, I feel like he can teach me something. So, all right, I'll, I'll come back and do this full time and put my hundred percent in, you know, this time I kind of half-assed last time. Cause I was half in half out. I wasn't sure if this is what I was going to be doing. Um, but when I did come back and just mentally said, this is what I'm doing it, that's when it all started clicking. And what were some of those times like, were you like, when you wanted to quit, what did that feel like kind of going through those motions? Oh God. What, like do you, can you recall any specific stories where you were like, I'm not fucking dealing with this. Like, this is miserable. I don't feel good. I'm not happy with who I am and what I'm doing. Like, do you have yeah. any of those? Oh, yeah. I mean, nothing specific. Just in general, I remember it, you know, it made me feel like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Like, you know, I got a degree. I have a degree in broadcast journalism. Graduated. Didn't want to do that. And then I go do makeup. That's what I was going to do and be a trainer. Then I changed to that. Now I'm doing insurance. And I don't want to do this anymore. What, what the fuck else am I going to do? Like, what's wrong with me? Why, why can I not be successful or find somebody that is successful that I can emulate? Like, you know, you feel like it's you and yeah, you just, you feel like a loser. You feel lost, feel stupid. I remember those feelings of inadequacy quite often. And that's what I think. Like if you want to learn who you are, truly as a person, I think you should definitely become an insurance agent. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, it's an entrepreneur in general, but I don't think there is another single business that will expose your flaws and show you your deepest insecurities that are so, you're so unaware of. You don't even notice it. You're so, so unaware true. of it that when it slaps you in the face, you don't even notice it. Like it makes you confront your fucking demons. And I absolutely love that. Yeah. It sucks it when you're going through it, but like, what were some of the biggest things that you got out of those? Like, I want to leave, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Those moments. What did you get out of those after like making it through that? Shoot. After me, I mean, to get through that, I think it was a lot of, you know, I, I would go to YouTube and just look up motivational videos. I got really, I that. Seriously, I really <laughs> but I was about to say, I, I had a whole folder of literally Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, like they got me through it. And, and my husband would, he would hear me in the morning if I'm getting dressed and I'm listening to Tony Robbins, he'd be like, you having a rough day, baby. <laughs> Like he knew if I was having a rough week of Tony was the one, you know, That's hilarious. <laughs> but, I mean, and I, I think just growing as a person and being open to looking at yourself and figuring out, realizing it's you, it's you, you've got to work on yourself and your mentality and not, and not crush yourself thinking I'm dumb, I'm stupid. No, you know what? I, I need to learn this. This is an area of opportunity. This is an area of growth. And, you know, if I definitely have gotten into like a little depression before about it. And you've just got to constantly keep putting that good stuff in your brain until you can, you know, turn it around. And then what you said right else. there, what you said right there, I think is so I don't want to say it goes unnoticed in this industry, but mindset is like preached upon. So like, go change your mindset. But it's like, okay, that's that's the equivalent of like, a, I, I went on a date a couple of years ago and this girl was like, you need to raise your frequency. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck does that even mean? I was like, what well, are Saturn and like, Ju like are they aligned <laughs> wrong today or something? What did your fucking horoscope tell you? But I was like, that's kind of what, that's kind of how I look at people who say, go change your mindset. It's like, okay, yeah. like smart ass, how do I actually do that? And my belief is it starts with your mouth set. 
Like yeah. what you tell yourself and the words that come out of your mouth and roll off that little tongue of yours that is so sharp. It's like that forms your beliefs right there. Yeah. Or like even just your you thoughts about yourself. yourself. Yes. Yeah. But it, it's like Absolutely. verbally or non-verbally, your communication shapes every single thing that you do. And that's what I've come to learn because when I was going through those, I wouldn't call it depression. I would call it just feeling sad, but doing it the fuck anyways. When I felt sad yeah. and I like, I started getting the neuro linguistic programming. Then I found this whole world of hypnosis and communication and language. It's like Carl Jung. Like I learned all these things about the unconscious mind and like finally made my first fucking million after I reshaped my beliefs and stuff. I was like, yeah, okay. Like this is awesome. This is something I can get behind. It's like, it's not what we're doing or any of that bullshit that really matters. It's the words we use to label our experiences that shape our view on it. It shapes our perception. That perception, like how we internalize the picture of how we view it, shapes our behavior and how we feel about it. Yeah. Because you have two agents, both with the same upline, who's an asshole. But one agent says, you know what? I'm going to use that as an example of what not to do. And he goes and does something with his life. And the other agent was like, well, I'm just not getting any help at all. Right. I guess I better quit and go back to a job. It's like, yeah, you're probably not cut out for this. Yeah. You're probably not. How many people have you seen just give up on themselves in this industry in eight years? Oh, my God. Hundreds. Hundreds. I mean, we tell people when we hire them on because they probably won't make it. But... You know, probably about one in 75. That seems about right. I say more like one in 100 and have a good chance. Yeah, of doing I was debating. Yeah. Profitable. Right. So, I mean, you've got a 1% chance. That's why I don't believe that 8% make it garbage because no. 7% of it, like 99% of the 8% are still struggling to pay their fucking bills. Yeah. So it's like 99% just suck in this industry. And like I said, it's, why do you think that is from your perspective? For me personally, I, like mm -hmm. I think it's they don't know how to deal with their emotions. Like their perception mm -hmm. is flawed. They have unrealistic expectations because they don't do their. This is what I love about like China and Japan is they teach their children to have due diligence. Like if you get scammed, it's your fault. If I'm on a date and a girl <laughs> says, if I'm on a first date with a girl and she's like, you need to go buy me a handbag. It's like, oh God. it's my fault if I get gold dug. Oh, shit. But I'm not stupid enough to let that happen. But it's like agents mm -hmm. will already be $5,000 in debt and their upline will tell them, well, you need to go spend an extra two grand this month in leads. Yeah. So, do you think that is a wise decision? Mm -mm. So they just yeah. go out to think for themselves or think unemotionally they can't detach from their emotions and they make emotional decisions and i can't stand when i see a fucking dude do it you girls yeah. get the excuse because you're girls <laughs> yeah but i think some of them use it a little too much honestly absolutely because if you're going to come into entrepreneurship that's a hard truth for a lot of women they need to hear business yeah. does not fucking care how you feel young lady yep if you yep. want an easy life go sell your feet pictures <laughs> Oh, we've had a few do that. I wouldn't doubt <laughs> it because they're probably not making it in the damn office. <laughs> nope. Rents do. Yeah. It yeah, it it's definitely it's mindset and it's it's being able to unfuck yourself. You know, That's realizing book. Who, whose book yeah, is that? Is that it is. I'd shoot, I don't I don't uh, it's gonna remember. drive me insane. I, I read that a couple of years ago. It was one of the first books I read as an insurance agent. Mm hmm And I remember it's, Oh, I remember how heartbroken I was when I found out Think and Grow Rich. Like, I found out that from studies and history and all the other people, it sounded like that dude was a scam. You ever, that's something I, I, I like knowing history. Yeah. But I was kind of heartbroken when I was like, damn, Napoleon, you lied to me? You didn't yeah. really meet this dude? It's like, how dare you? Yeah. But that's besides the point. Yeah. <laughs> So mm -mm. what were like top two or three? What were the things that like after you did it, you were like, holy shit, like the light bulb went off in my head 
I know what I'm doing now. Shit, I, I think just being able to, you mean like in a sales, like making a. Yeah, like we'll talk about this from a few different perspectives, but like before yeah. you knew how to sell insurance, what was the moment you said like, oh, I know exactly what to say, what questions to ask. It's like, I understand my job here now. What yeah, was the I, moment like? I think, and I think it was something I more intuitively figured out on my own than as far as like what the training I was given was, because the training was very black and white. This is the information you need to run a quote. This is how to run a quote. This is, they would pretty much tell you what to write them, you know, what plan to write them on. And for me, it was, it was more like, Hey, what's going on? You know, why are you looking for this? What are your needs? You know, actually asking questions, you know, and to find out what people are looking for and, and that kind of thing. And I think that's when it kind of hit me more. This isn't just like a regular job. Like you take the order, you put it in the computer, you tell them how much they owe kind of thing. It's really more relating to somebody and meeting them on their level kind of sales for me. And I think that's why whenever I started, I was more successful than anybody else at the time was because that's just kind of intuitively how I'd sell anyway. You find out why they need it. Absolutely. Because without a need, there's no basis for agreement. There's no right. trust. Yeah. I mean, that that's how archaic it was when I started here. The industry is so fucking outdated with its training. It blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, you... Yeah. Oh. The intro is, hey, I saw you were looking online. Who are you looking for? Not why are you looking? Who needs coverage? They said, I want some fucking insurance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a policy. Right. Yeah. It, and where did you um, learn to like, where did you get some of your sales ability? Where, where did you acquire those at? I honestly think it's just kind of natural. I, I don't like sales. I don't like salespeople. And I realize that salespeople have a really bad rep. And it's because of the bad salespeople. So yeah, because they're like, yeah, they're like that. <laughs> what what, 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 what do you need? Old, How much you got? Yeah, the, the old mafia people's like, hi, see, you got some snake oil. See, take care yeah. of all your acne. Hi, see, yeah. give me fifty dollars, right. or I'll, I'll I'll break your knuckles. Yeah, yeah. or no, I'd be like, hey, I'd, I'd hate to see something terrible happen to you and your family. You might want to get this insurance so it doesn't. You know, like oh, kind of oh my. If, so, if a girl came into my house and said that, she was like, sign my ass up. Just because of the <laughs> accent. If any girl wants to know the key to my heart, it's like the accents. But like when I lived in Australia. Oh, God, I, was, I bet. And here's the thing. Like, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, like I used to be so nervous to talk to girls. It was like my mom would tell me like. No, you stay away from those bitches. They have cooties and all that stuff. I was like, is there something wrong with them? Like, okay, I'll go hang out with the boys. Yeah, they're going to make you a daddy. That's what's wrong with them. Yeah. <laughs> As I started getting older, going through life, we'll call it puberty, I wanted to start talking to them. And I noticed that every year these new foreign exchange students would come in and Rodrigo would have some Venezuelan or like crazy accent and all the girls would just like, ah, oh, like gush all over it. It's like, <laughs> Okay, fucking Rodrigo, what's your secret? But I like, I got to experience that when I went to Australia. Yeah. They were like, you have such a nice accent, like your voice. I was like, I don't have an accent. You do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just what's normal to me. But I played that to my full advantage. Oh, like, yeah. I loved Australia. I bet. It's gorgeous. So what, what else was one of the big, like, pivotal moments of your, like, insurance career where you were like, ah, like, here's how I grow in agents. Like, give me an in your own words. Like, what were kind of one of those big deciding factors that took a huge pivotal shift in how you, like, ran your business or? I mean, lines? I think the the bigger shift was when I did decide to, to move into leadership. Um. And it was it was really because I was one of probably about 10 or 12 agents. And we had one agent in the office that was just a bad apple, like a bad apple. She was lying, she was cheating. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's not something we can, you know, really do um, or that gets done. So I'm like, okay, I've I've got to 
get above her to at least have some influence to get something done about this. So, you know, I went to my upline who would originally, after I'd, you know, written that 100,000 annual volume, he had offered me a promotion. And I said, no, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to train people. I'm barely keeping myself afloat. But I went back to him and I said, okay, I'm, I'm ready for that promotion. I, I need this promotion because I didn't tell him because I, I'm getting this girl gone. But <laughs> that's why I wanted it. Um, so I think it was just by by finally taking taking leadership and taking charge over that, I've been able to kind of help mold the rest of the culture of the office. And the culture is really what was lacking before and why we had so much turnover. And, you know, I, I got to work with a great leadership team that was already here and the three of us together. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you've ever read the five working geniuses, uh, it's like the three of us just work really well together, you know, off of our strong points and weak points. And that is literally like when we put it into second gear and really got the office going and moving at that point. So I think the culture idea was a big, big change. Yeah, it's, it's how you shape the belief and the perception of the people below you. And that's yeah. that's ninety nine percent of agents' problem right there is they already have a flawed mindset, not necessarily a flawed mindset, but like a a dangerous belief about their organization. They're either too bought in and don't see the bullshit, yeah, or they like they have no belief at all, and they're like, "This is fucking stupid." Mm -hmm. So those don't last long. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That, that's why this industry, the attrition, is so like it's through the roof. Agent churn. It gives me yeah. a mind rate even thinking about it. So oh, like, it's exhausting. It's exhausting as a as a trainer. What skills do you think, like what skills that you have to kind of grow and sharpen to communicate with the whole agency and like shape the culture, have those hard conversations? What actual skills did you have to like grow and develop? I mean, just leadership skills. And what makes those leadership skills up, though? Like, what did you have to do with your communication, your tonality, like how to have hard conversations? How? What did you have to do to structure meetings that actually were effective, not just a rah-rah cheer fest and fuck off? Yeah, we, yeah we, we, we can't do that rah-rah cheer stuff here. That's just none of our personalities. Um, but, you know, just sit down and, and make a schedule. The schedule is is your lifeline as an agent, you know, or as a leader, because as a leader, you've got to sit and, and at least have, you know, five to 10 minute conversations with everybody in your office and build relationships with them, you know, find out what's going on in their personal life. And then, you know, how work is going, where are they struggling? Where do you need help? Where do you need training? And then being able to put those trainings, you know, on a schedule and into effect so we can help everybody without calling out, you know, one or two people, because chances are somebody is having trouble with the same thing this person is, but they're just too embarrassed to say it. So what you're telling me there. is it's just back down to communication again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was a skill that you really had to develop. And how, how different is it trying to find out? not the symptoms, but the root causes of your agent's problems compared to how much different is that tone of conversation from talking to like people buying policies? I think it's way different. Um, I mean, with, with your clients, well, I say it's way different, but honestly, I mean, now I'm thinking about it because I've never thought about it much before, but yeah, it's really like kind part of the of nuances because they do have their similarities. But what yeah. are the nuances? Like, what's different about talking to your people to find out the problems compared to your clients? And talking to your clients, you you're going to find a way to solve their problems. You know, you just want to ask what's going on, what do you want, what are you looking for, you know, what do you like in a policy, what do you not like in a policy? Do you know what you need? More of those kind of questions. Whereas, you know, or even, you know, what do you guys do for work? You know, we'll, we'll help with that. Whereas when you're talking more to agents, it's more of a training kind of, I, I think, you know, as far as where they're having issues or problems, um, if it's like objections that's giving them problems, then we'll kind of do more trainings in that area. 
So you're That's leading your client, you're leading them to their own answer. Like they're coming up with it themselves. Yeah, the client. Yeah. Them. Yeah. yeah. Guys, if you're listening, this is how you put people in a resourceful state. Because if you just give someone the answer without them having to do any of the fucking work, they're going to cancel a policy. They're going to leave your agency. And they're they going to feel like you don't give a shit. Experience. Like they don't have that epiphany, that aha, that light bulb moment. People yeah. buy on emotion, whether that's your beliefs or a policy. You have to sell them based on emotion and put them in charge of coming to their own conclusion. Yep. Absolutely. So like, you know, with a family that if they have young kids, oh, the kids play any sports? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we need to make sure we have something with, with some accident coverage, right? Right. Baseball's <laughs> dangerous in Baton Rouge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything's dangerous in Baton Rouge. <laughs> Well, what's the craziest thing you think that is dangerous in Baton Rouge? Like, what's the craziest thing you could think of to back that up? Um, okay, so most recently there was some poor college girl that was going home from, I don't know if it was a bar or what. She was sitting at a railroad track. There was a train going across, and she literally got shot in her car driving home. Was not a bad area town. They found out it was a gang shooting. They had to initiate you know, by killing somebody. So this poor innocent girl sitting at a train stop in her car with the doors locked. That was when I was like, where, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> it's crazy. So I, I look at the world now. I mean, people say I've got, have you ever watched the originals or the vampire diaries? A little bit of vampire diaries. So I, I was on a date a couple of years ago and this girl, she was like, Five minutes into it, she gets up and leaves. She's like, you're you're just like Klaus Michelson. I can't do this. I was like, who the fuck is Klaus? Like, who named yeah. her kid Klaus? <laughs> so I had to go understand and started researching and watch the show. I was like, okay, no, she was spot on. Like, perfect summary. <laughs> perfect summary. So, but I look at the world and see what these young kids are growing up into, and it's it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, but I'm also non-tolerant because like, if I see some young kid doing that shit, I don't care if you're 12 years old, I will bend you over my knee and like bust your fucking ass. Yeah. Like these yeah. kids have no fucking discipline, no goddamn yeah. father figure that's strong and can tell like no man says no anymore. Right. Right. There's no dude who stands up for what the fuck he believes in. Dude, when 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 I worked behind the makeup counters, what would piss me off more than anything is the mom would be shopping at a counter and their little fucking booger fingered kids would be at my counter putting their dirty fingers all up <laughs> in my eyeshadow testers. And I'm I did this multiple times and everybody that I worked with knew, oh shit. Ashley's going to get them. I would walk over, grab their hand and be like, do not do that. Where's your mother? <laughs> and drag them to their mother. No. I no. threw them over the counter. Mm -hmm. like, Get your kid. I can toss yeah. the baby. Not really. Yeah. I wouldn't really do that to a kid. But depends on no, how old yeah. they are. I might football punt them. I mean, you know, if they're really cherubic and chubby, they could probably take it. But it's like pe people act like I'm insane. But like, Here's one of the things that I keep in my office, just because I'm not <laughs> fucking around with people. Uh, but it's, you can't. Me. The fact that young men are resorting to gang violence because they. The whole intersexual dynamics and all this stuff ruining the world, society telling women that, that like all this equality bullshit coming out. Have you seen in the news where they're starting to think about introducing a draft? for women to go into the military no making a mandatory draft but, for women. what are we drafting for what war is there ukraine fuck i don't know palestine I mean, I, bullshit. I mean look i know there's a president there's an election coming on so there's probably about to be one i would guess or another you know mass pandemic well you already know that we have to stick our fingers in every single war that's going on so i'm i'm so i believe we already have troops over in israel or palestine or anything from all the Hamas shit going on right now. But it's like, it's nuts what's going on in the world. Like all these feminists mm -hmm. out there saying like, 
I can do anything a man can do. And we want to quote, like, you're about to get it. Yeah. You're about <laughs> to get all, the, all the like yeah. delicate women like you. They're all like, I don't want to go to fucking war. It's like, I just want to shop. Like, I want to get my hair done and go like, I want to go hang out with my fucking kids. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do all that bullshit. Yeah. You don't want to sit here and sell policies and, and make $100,000, you know? I don't gonna... yeah, they don't I'll... pay well in war. <laughs> war doesn't pay much. It's just fucking nuts what's going on. Like, these kids, like, that. hearing some young girl lost her life, it it's blows insane. my fucking mind. And everyone will freak out if, like, uh, Drake died tomorrow. I don't give a fuck about Drake. Yeah. If, if a single life is of no value then none are worth anything yeah so like to hear some young girl lost her life over some young dumbass boy who's emotionally unstable i'm guessing does not have a solid father figure because he wouldn't be in a fucking gang if he did right where the fuck are all the men yeah like there's only so much of me to fucking go around so (laughs) i'm just being serious like it's fucking stupid yeah yeah they're 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 gangbanging down here so I want to put all these fucking kids in a room and just beat the shit out of them. Like, I'll be your fucking dad. I'll be your fucking father. Cause apparently no one else is going to step up to the fucking plate. And it, do, do you have any kids? I do not. I never really wanted kids. I realized from a young age that I'm pretty selfish and that if I had kids, I couldn't be selfish. So I don't, uh, I have a stepdaughter though. <laughs> What's that like? Um, it's great. It's great for me because I kind of almost get to be like an aunt type figure with a little more authority, I think, just to be able to help guide them, make right decisions and help them think through, you know, why are you doing this? You know, why did you say this? Kind of, I think the thing that I never got was that, you know, self-realization thinking, okay, why do I think this? What's behind it that makes me think this? You know, You're one just, of the few girls I've met who think rationally and logically. Very much. You have the, but I'm guessing because you're an entrepreneur. And not, now I'm not saying that's the reason why you think that way. But your upbringing, like, was your father, like, what, what was that like growing up? Yeah, my parents stayed together until I was 26. Uh, my, I'm very much, very much like my dad as far as just, thought wise and how I think I look just like my mama. Um, but you know, like my, my dad went to Vietnam when he got, as soon as he got back from Vietnam, you know, he bought five acres, got a house, started his own business. He was a veterinarian, started his own clinic. Um, so he had that entrepreneurial mindset as did his father. Are you an only child? No, I'm the middle. I'm okay. the middle child. I'll get, I gave my parents hell. <laughs> <laughs> I will not lie about that. I, I fought them tooth and nail for everything. So I think it's a lot of it's just something I was born with because I was a middle child. I was always, you know, fighting for attention, fighting to stand out. Um, I just, I don't like settling for other people's rules and standards. And as soon as, you know, I feel like I've gotten as much as I can get from somewhere, I'm gone. Like I'm bored. I'm gone. I want something else. I want something more. That's just always how I've been. See, that is what I call female nature right there. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's who you are. And it's like, when when I hear dudes call women gold diggers, what do you think about that? (laughs) A lot of them are. I think a lot of them are. Here's my thing. What you just said, you get what you want and you're gone. So like you, I think that's beautiful though for a man because it makes you rise up to be the best you can fucking be. I think every woman is a gold digger. I'm not saying that in a negative way. But I think they extract resources because you guys ain't got like you're not going to go fight somebody. Right. So you need someone to keep you safe, but you have to have the best man for the job. Like people. Oh, I don't want no man. I mean, I have one. Yeah, I have one. But no, I. And and he's probably a good dude, though. Oh, he's awesome. Exactly. You're not going to get with a guy you don't respect. Right. But in my head and and. I guess maybe I kind of saw it too, just from growing up, you know, my parents really weren't happy together, but my mom worked for my dad, so she couldn't leave. 
And you I didn't just, want to be in that same situation. N- nope. Did not ever. I was going to make my own money. I'm going to support myself. And even now, I mean, even whenever, you know, my husband and I got together, I said, I'm, I'm not sharing money. I don't want any of your money. I'm not giving you any of mine. You know, if we buy stuff together, fine, but I can move out and leave at any time that I want to. And, and I can. So I'm never going to be stuck in the situation where I have to be with somebody because of money. I think a lot of marriages today are like, they're fucked. Oh yeah. The divorce rate right now is like 80% from statistics. It, it's absolutely through the roof. And I think like marriage is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Bringing kids into this world is a miracle. I think that's truly what keeps most women happy. Like from a biological standpoint, it's that social unit, having their family, their clan around. You might be an exception to the rule, but it's what makes most women happy. They're fucking children. Yeah. What are some, like, have there been many struggles that the business has put on or strained like your marriage at all? What that, what's that kind of been like? You know, Luckily, no, just because he has been so supported from from day one. You know, I mean, sometimes he'll call and say, hey, are you coming home from dinner tonight? Oh, man, I'm all right. Well, you know, I, I cook dinner. I'll just leave it in the microwave for you. But he's, he's always been very supportive and understands, you know, even though he's disappointed, you know, that I can't do something over a weekend because I got to work or something like that. So honestly, it hasn't. But I've seen it in other agents that I've worked with where it does, you know, they leave their job because they're our husband or wife, you know, wants them home every day by five o'clock and you just can't do that in this industry. Absolutely not. That's what I took. Being a woman in this industry, I think is very hard. Like both men and women have their different struggles in this industry because for one, men are growing up fatherless and they don't know how to fucking detach emotionally. So they get bogged down with all the stupid shit over here. They they rejected me. It's uh, uh, I'm gonna go cry. It's like yeah. shut up, pussy. Like yeah. grow up. But the woman, like you guys have to sacrifice quite a bit. I mean, I'll tell you, I've got some badass bitches in my office. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I do. I have two, believe it or not, two of them with five kids each, not together, each. Each of these women have five fucking kids. And they are kicking ass at this and being kick-ass moms. I mean, I I literally don't know how they do it. I don't. Like, it's amazing. That's what I'm saying. But they they have to sacrifice a lot to make that happen. Yeah. A lot of them have to sacrifice their their own identity. And this is where you see those, like, 30, like, these people turning 40 when their kids are 20, it's like they start having an identity crisis mm-hmm. when their kids move out. They're like, I've been a mom for 20 years and I no longer know who I am because right. I'm yeah. not like changing diapers. I'm not doing this. And it's like, I think you should yeah. definitely take some time to get to know and love yourself and learn who you are as a person, regardless if you're a man or a woman. Yeah. But it's like, if not, like you're, you're going to go through hell. And this industry will bring it out of you, whether you oh, want God. it to or not. Yeah. H- have you had yeah. any of those identity crises in this industry yet? Oh God, absolutely, absolutely. I've I've had not one but two, two agents, females. I hate I hate to <laughs> hate to say it because I'm one, but um, literally, you know, we train for a whole week. Usually, we try and get people on the phone the first day to just break it because they're. Yep, I don't so know scared. why people are so fucking scared of the goddamn phone. They use it every day. Don't get it. For so for five days, this girl wanted to know more and no more and no more. And finally, I was like, you've got to get on the phone. And I put the computer in front of her and I handed her the script that she had had for seven days to memorize. It's all of one page and 14 like print size. OK, it ain't much. And you can read off of it. And she looks at the script and she looks at me and she goes, I just can't do this. See ya. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, well, that was easy. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thank you for not wasting more of my time than the week you already did. But um, another one would have to pop Xanax every time. She, oh, I gotta get, go, go get my Xanax. I'll oh, call Jesus. So I call and I'm like, can you bring me one too? <laughs> to deal with you? <laughs> like, 
that that's <sighs> yeah so i'm yeah. very i won't say biased or anything like that but i i don't want this to sound like dickheadish maybe it's perceived as it like i treat women very differently in this industry from how i like talk to dudes and women and women who are entrepreneurs and women just off the streets working their little fucking bullshit nine to five like totally two different people because like one's entrepreneurial has to think like risk calculation numbers consumer like think logically and rationally and it's like it's that's more masculine thinking in terms of that so when i see these girls come in and they're like well i need to smoke weed to get on the phone it's like yeah no the fuck you don't like, no, no you, you need to go yeah you need to go work at an hourly job and punch a clock is what you need to do go to starbucks get as high as you want i don't care like smoke six blocks before you go in like yeah. not here mm -mm. not fucking here i don't you're not gonna yeah. have a crutch that you can just walk on and when things get hard me wait six months of my life coaching you just for you to fucking yeah. up and go anyways yeah so i'm yeah. glad you brought that up because that's one thing agency owners know to realize is like one how to have hard conversations and cut the cancer because it will spread through the group yeah and two is just get rid of you have to trim the fat yeah I, it, they're not going to make it anyway so go ahead and rip off the band-aid now rather than like i'm a hairy dude so when i like slowly take off <laughs> i would like, heard that it's like, ah! like wax so one of my ex-girlfriends like convinced me to like wax my chest hair because she thought it would be funny so it's was like all right it's like I'll do it. It's not gonna hurt that bad. The first, it's like fuck. Like that kind of stung. It's like I'm never doing this again. But they were like slowly pulling it. It's like ah. It's like I can feel it. Yeah. So yeah just rip it off. Like just go ahead and rip it off. That's what I learned from yeah. waxing, guys. So go ahead and yeah. rip those motherfuckers out of your agency. Yeah. And we are not sorry. Are, are you sorry for cussing on here at all, Ashley? No, I'm look, if you're cool with it, I'm cool with it because I cuss like a sailor on a regular basis. Not. Here. Be yourself. So, I, I can't stand that. Like, no. you cuss too much. Mm -hmm. Like, we're probably not a good fit for each other, sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the women that make it here are more like your typical man. They are. We're, it, that's, it, what I'm, that's what I tell them is like, yeah. you cannot, like, your masculine shit, like you have to also leave that at the job as a woman. Because if you go home bossing your fucking husband around, I promise <laughs> you it's only too long before he's doing something with the babysitter or the bitch next door. So, like, leave that masculinity yeah. boss bitch, like CEO shit in the office. Because yeah. if you go home, like, clean this up. Like, your husband's like, <laughs> he's not a bitch. He's like, who the fuck are you talking to, young lady? <laughs> there have been more than a few times when I've gone home after like a rough day. Got your ass put doing check that. You. He's like, what the fuck happened to you at work today? Yeah, got, I like, yeah, got put in check sorry. real quick. I'm sorry. I'm taking it out on you. I didn't leave it there. I'm sorry. That, that shit's hilarious. Yeah, no, it, it happens. I will and, not date insurance agents. Yeah. <laughs> I will not date a girl who's any type of entrepreneur. I know what kind of mindset they have. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I just don't want to date that because it's like yeah. I don't want to compete. I don't yeah. want to compete in my relationship. Yeah, because I mean to do this, you you've got to be competitive, you know. And it's correct. Yeah, it, it's and not it, a good match. And the dudes who can't handle that, I'm not saying I can. It's just that I prefer a woman who doesn't have to like go through any stress or anything like that because it does masculinize them. I don't want to deal with that at all. I want like. You you want to like you want a coffee? Yeah. Like that, that that innocence. I don't know why it makes me so fucking happy, but I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's just who I am as a person. What? How much do you cross sell into your book? I know you said you do a little bit of life, a little bit of like a lot of life, a lot of health. So like, what can you share with other agents who maybe want to implement a new concept or a new line yeah. of experience into their business? How can they increase their profitability? We ran so. off. On the tangent okay. it was yeah yeah i okay so this is actually something that i'm really really getting into right now and i'm like having one of those like mind-blowing moments um because for the last few years our office and and i somewhat got to be very lead dependent and we were training the new agents how to work leads 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 dial 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 text text dial that 
Yep. Where's the market? Yeah. And then I'm sure you've probably talked about it on here, um, you know, with all the TCPA regulations, with the texting, it's pretty much put a, I mean, just A to B. Oh my, it wrecked yeah. so many people's campaigns. Oh, it fucked me oh. up on some stuff. It destroyed our office. It was, it was a slow, but uh, it just over the, over a year. I mean, it, we literally started coming out of it and finding a way to work things other than leads just recently. And I'm really kind of taking the bull by the horns on this because I like this way better than leads. Um, but yeah, we ground to a halt and lost a lot of people when when all that stuff went out and leads were just sh shittier shit than they've ever been. And they've always been shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, on, on top of the shit that Always. they were. Yeah, I mean, it was the biggest pile you couldn't even. But um, so yeah, so I'm limited as to what I can sell. I have my life and health insurance license. Um, so what I've started doing is calling people that do other types of insurance, you know, property, casualty, homeowners, auto. I'll sell into other people's fucking books. Make yeah. referral partners. Yeah, Thank I want to know. Thank I want to know the Medicare agents. Um, I'm trying to get Medicaid agents, but you, you really can't get Medicaid or, or marketplace people. If, if anybody's listening that can do that, please, I'm looking for partners there. Um, but I mean, literally everything, you know, any kind of insurance or even CPAs, I get asked, you know, for CPAs sometimes I can sell in about 28 different states. So I'm trying to find these partners and build like a master referral database in every state. So if a client calls and says, hey, do you do this kind of insurance? I want to be able to say, yeah, I do. Technically, I don't. But let me put you in touch with my expert in that. Let me put you in touch with my auto right. expert in Illinois. Here you go. So that's really what I'm working on building now. That is so beautiful. That That is awesome right there. I wish more agents listened to me. Like, I know what the fuck I'm doing in this industry, okay? <laughs> I wish, eight, like... This is a relationship business. No. If you are watching this, this is a relationship fucking business. And look, I'll tell you what I'd had this idea. I'd heard it from other agents in the company that were like multi million dollar writers. And I've, I've thought to myself, and it was when I was in this, what I would call depression from, you know, or mourning the loss of our lead system in the easy way when we were easily just texting shit. I was mourning the loss of doing shit easy. And I heard about this referral thing. And I'm like, so what am I going to do? I'm going to call like 10 random P and C agents and, you know, be like, hey, blah, blah. I'm like, who's going to really? And, and I, and again, you, you've got to fucking just mentally evaluate yourself and why you're thinking and what you're, what it really means. You know, when I start questioning other people's recommendations. For, first off, I'm only going to make sure I'm listening to people who have what I want. First off. Yep. And then I'm like, well, that's not going to work. I have to say, wait, maybe he's got me maybe, like maybe yep. he's tried. Maybe he's like fell over a couple of times. Maybe he's like got his nose broken and he knows a couple of things. Let me try it out. And they're usually yep. right. Yep. It's that that's I had to get again. It was mindset you know my mindset was just in a failing mindset because everything we had done everything we had been doing was failing we were trying to find new crm systems it was failing everything was fail and i was just in that failure mindset and when i heard that the first thing i, I made it negative oh well that's not going to work you call five people what's that going to do for you and i'm a like lot. why am i thinking why am i thinking like this Wh what what is it that's making me you know and i just had to question myself and until i got out of it and actually went and fucking did it. And literally I, I made one phone call and the person's like, oh yeah, oh, that's great. We don't have anybody for health. We actually have a couple people that just came in. They're looking for health coverage. Here, let me get you their name and number. I'm like, shit, this works. Absolutely. It's usually not like, a word that you need. It's a who. Yeah. Ask who, not fucking how. Yeah. Ask who, not how. Like, you never, you are one relationship away from a full calendar every single fucking year of your life. Yeah. You're, it, it, I had some girl introduced her to a guy that I know. She just wrote a fucking annuity. She just got paid $68,000 today. Yeah, it's a nice one. 
It's, it's not what, it's who that yeah. you fucking know in this industry. Because they are, here's the thing. These people have already taken 10, 20, sometimes if it's a family business, 30, 40, 50 years to build up the book that they have. And if you leverage a conversation the right way, I don't care if you got to go on four double dates with him and his annoying ass wife or annoying ass <laughs> husband. Just listen to like, yeah, we got new couches. Yeah, I know you don't want to talk about their couches and furniture, but endure it. Build a relationship. And he's like, OK, I trust you now. Let me send you everyone I know with my PNC yep. and you can write them life policies. Yep. I just want 20 percent. It's like, boom, there, there you go. You, Yep. Six figure income, multiple yep. six figure income. It blows my mind. Yep. You were fucking awesome, Ashley. I want you to know that. So here's the thing. Thank you. I want to help the agents who maybe they're watching this fucking a year from now. I don't know. YouTube is a beast of its own. Yeah. But we talked before. If someone wants to come work with you or they're just like, this is like, I love this girl. If, if one of the boss bitches are out there, she's like, I love this girl. She's like, I love everything she's saying. I, I'm willing to fucking put in the work. I'm willing to not pop Xanax just for fun. You don't have to buy me a Pez dispenser. You don't have to buy me a Pez dispenser for the office party. Where can yeah. they come to reach you at? Honestly, they can go to my Facebook page is probably what I'm on the most. I have a Google page. I have Instagram. Everything business-wise is What's your Instagram? Much, um, I think it's Ash Knows Health. So I went with Ash instead of Ashley because my name's spelt funny. There's no E in it. Yep. So it's just That's Ash Knows it. Health. Yeah. So you guys just search the name on the screen, reach out to her, send her a message. She sent me yeah. a happy birthday and I got her on this interview. So yeah, yeah, I'm all over. And my, I mean, that's my cell phone, whatever you find online, it's, it's my cell phone. So you can call me, text me directly. I luckily, I mean, in eight years doing this, I've never had to change my number. I, I really just did. I did just changed you? my number like over the week, over the last weekend, because uh, for my birthday, I was getting like, random nude pictures from girls that I haven't talked to in like seven years. I had people calling me from YouTube. They're like, I'm going to blow up your house. It's like, what the fuck is going on? It's like, I haven't you talked to you for off. six years and you're married. <laughs> Why are you sending me nudes? Like, what do you, you don't even know where I live. How are you going to blow up my house? And I want to see you try. And it's like, oh, people go like, my upline did this. Like, I don't have time for your, like your yeah. shit form. Like, I yeah. don't. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to change my number and only make sure like 10 people have it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just changed it. And it's like not having my phone go off like every 10 minutes. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. So I have more time to sit in my thoughts and talk to myself. I, I'm a weird dude outside of these uh, interviews. I like having conversations about how the world works. Maybe if I can get an alien on my podcast next. An alien? I bet I find one in Baton Rouge. Um, oh, there's there's definitely a lot in Baton Rouge. Um, the green ones and the illegal ones. <laughs> <laughs> get one on here, like yeah. no more, no more. It's like, huh? Yeah. Now I've I've actually recently really gotten into the whole alien thing. One hundred percent now. And like it, there's no doubt it's true. I, I downloaded loaded an app. I haven't had a chance to really dive into it yet, but it's how to telepathically communicate with them. Oh, well, I tried. Like I, uh, it was a couple months ago. I was sitting at a bench with a girl out on a date one night, and I saw this star. It was brighter than like, and it wasn't the North Star, but I saw it start going in circles. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" I got my phone out and zoomed in. And this thing's like shooting all over the place. So I got on Facebook Live. People are going nuts. They're like, what the hell is that? That's an airplane. Like, bitch, an airplane doesn't yeah, they don't move purple. like that. Mm -mm. So I was like, I, I sat there and I was like, close your eyes for a minute. I don't want you to see me do this. And I was like, like just staring at it. 
please come down here and talk to me. Like, I was trying to focus to my thoughts. I was like, I can be the first person to get you on YouTube. I was like, this would be okay. left with it. I was, where, okay. I was trying to do everything I could. Where, first of all, where were you? What state were you uh, in? Henderson, Kentucky was where this was. I was downtown at the riverfront, right. and I came back like week after week, and the motherfucker would just be in the same spot. And it really? started, every time I got down there, it started doing shit again. I asked a couple walking by. I was like, hey, I was like, sorry to interrupt your conversation. This girl like gave me the stink eye. I was like, this will take a fucking second. I was like, do you see that up there? Or am I going like, yeah, like, am I seeing things? She's like, that's Mercury retrograde. She's like, don't you know? Do you not? I was like. Is Mercury moving? Do you see Mercury moving though? I was like, bitch, <laughs> just the planet's not around. dribbling around. Like, it's not doing that. Okay? Like, it's a <laughs> fucking alien. <laughs> but it, so, I, so we're still not sure if Mercury was moving though. No, apparently Mercury okay. was just fucking going. It was playing with itself. I don't know. It's in retrograde <laughs> or something. It, if you're a woman, delete your fucking horoscope apps, okay? I don't care what the fuck Sagittarius and Libra had a conversation yeah. about. All we care about are the aliens, where they are, and how to contact them. Yes. See, you and I think, great minds think alike. I get it. So, totally look, get thank it. you so much for fucking coming on here, wishing me a happy birthday, all that. Guys, if you want to go work with Ashley, this is probably one of my favorite pod, like podcast interviews I've ever done. Oh, thanks. Seriously. And... Go buy some fucking insurance. I'm going to send my girl after you. Fucking put my piece away. Yeah, go get some fucking coaching from runningbuddiesacademy.com, okay? You fucking need it, and I will completely rebuild your mouth set so you can become a new person and achieve everything you want. Because if you were the person who is capable of doing it, you already fucking would have. Hard truth. I know that's how we're going to end this. So go reach out to Ashley. This has been super fun. I'd love to get you back on here again in the future. Yeah. But if you have anything you want to close out with, I'll let you close this down. Um, no, I mean, it, it's like you said, it's all about mouth set, mindset, mastering yourself, knowing who you are, and just getting the fuck over it and doing it. Yeah, so I'm building up a little community now called Mouth Maticians. It's people who always know what to say. I thought that was All pretty right. cool. So I'm yeah. going to get some mathematician shirts. I teach I mathematics. Like okay. I like it. So I like it. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, happy hustling party, people. And I will see you on the next one.